Today I want to talk to you about three unfortunate characteristics of the Gen 3 1290 Super Duke car. The way it comes off the showroom floor. Trail, drive, instability. And how you can fix all three of these things with one simple looking but quite complex part. The Sport Link. Hi, I'm Gogo. This video is sponsored by SuperDuke.com and let's get to it. Okay, first on the hit list is Trail. And I'll tell you, this would make my day if I could explain to you what trail is and what it feels like and how you can even visualize it. If I could do this in a way that you've never seen or heard of before, I would be a happy man. So what I did was a little background work, right? You can think about trail like we've all read about in magazines and online. Uh, you know, you project a vertical line through the axle and then there's another line through the steering stem and you, where they hit the ground, you go, oh God. That does nothing for me. It's done nothing for me for 30 years. So um, there's, a, there's a visual way to do this that I kind of thought of. I machined this special little part, which fits right inside of our steering stem. And then I bought a laser. See this little laser? So the laser fits in this piece, and then this piece goes in the steering stem. Watch this. Put this here. Okay, so that dot is a rake. Okay, what that dot represents, it shows, illustrates. If you look, watch this. See that line, this saw, that is our steering stem. That's the angle of the steering stem. Think of it like this. That's the leading point in the whole equation of the motorcycle that follows behind it, okay? Now, what's the trail? Like, how do we get this vertical line uh, projected through the axle? What is that? So, luckily, I'm a carpenter, right? Okay, so when you think about this vertical line, which I'm representing here with my carpentry laser, which goes through the axle. Why does it have to go through the axle? All this vertical line is illustrating is where the tire hits the ground. That's all. You know, the tire's round, the wheel's round. So you go from the axle straight down. That's the middle of the contact patch of the tire. So you have the leading edge of everything motorcycle and then trailing behind it is where the tire hits the ground, right? So if, if the motorcycle is going this way, right, the tire wants to follow that leading edge. It's trailing behind and wants to follow it. If you could theoretically, if you could theoretically, like imagine you're pulling this along like a little wagon, radio flyer, and if I was to lift the rear tire and then move it here, and as you're going along, drop the tire, Boom, it's gonna whack back into place. It's gonna go right in straight in line, just like everything follows a radio flyer wagon. Um, that's why with longer trail, the bike really wants to go straight more. With shorter trail, maybe you can have more of an impression on it. I'm, I'm exaggerating these extremes, but that really helps to understand things sometimes. So if you look at this, you have two lines going here. One is the rake and one is like the tire. How do you measure your trail? <laughs> Check this out. You just measure from that point to that point. Boom. That's your trail. So now you have the book understanding of what trail is and now you have a visual idea and leading edge and trailing point of the tire. Um, what does this mean? What, what, is, what does this mean? Um, think of it, I like to think of it. I don't really like the word instability. A lot of times trail and instability are two words that you'll see repeated in a conversation about trail. Um, I like to think of it differently. Resistance. And, and I'll explain to you why. If this is the leading edge, right? And back here is where our tire is. This is our trail. Um, 
if you were to exaggerate this a little, make it a little farther away so we could see, and think about it from this angle. If when you turn on the bars, right? When you want to go, you turn the bars. If you turn this way, you're gonna to have to push this tire way over here, right? It's gonna be a lot of resistance because remember, it wants to go in line with that leading edge as you're going 50 miles an hour down the road. When you want to turn this way, you're gonna pull it this way. So there's all this resistance because the bike wants to go straight, which is a wonderful thing, right? If you jumped off your bike, it would just keep going. It would just keep going straight. That wouldn't fall down because of centrifugal force in the wheels and it would just keep going straight because of tread. Now, if you exaggerate the other way around and you go just 10 millimeters of trail, imagine this. Very easy. Very easy to, very easy to change direction. Very easy to turn in. Um, you bike's going this way, you want it to go that way, go ahead, it's gonna go, right? Um, lot less resistance with less tread. Now, why do people talk about instability? I don't like this idea. I don't like the word instability because it gives me the impression that having a lot of trail is good. Having not enough trail, right, means you're gonna crash. So this is stable and this is unstable. You're gonna crash. It's not the truth. It's not the truth. Okay, let's pause for dramatic effect here. I want to do my best to help you understand the opportunity that there is here. The focal point of this entire video, as a matter of fact, you could say that this one point is the foundation behind not necessarily why I race, but definitely why I still race. Certainly why I make performance suspension parts for the Super Duke and why I created superduke.com so I could share this with you. What is this? Balance. When you consider rake and trail, you can, we, we talked about having too much trail. Uh, we didn't really talk about what it feels like to have like not enough trail. So not enough trail is nervous. The bike is nervous. When you're leaned over, you need to turn, it feels like it wants to turn more. Maybe your confidence is a little low. Maybe you don't really trust the traction. It's a little bit freaky. Right? So you have frustrating and freaky, and what's in the middle? Opportunity is in the middle. Balance is in the middle. And let me tell you something, when you have a motorcycle, I don't care what motorcycle it is, in this case it's a Super Duke, when you have a motorcycle that's balanced, right, for you, it's one of the most beautiful experiences that you can have on a motorcycle. It's what motorcycling, to me, only now, after decades of racing and riding, only now have I come to understand how much there is behind balance. I'll give you a very short story, true story. It's two months ago, early July, Laguna Seca, Monterey, California. I'm racing Arma. The year before, I had done low 32s. Had a couple of electrical problems, broken ankle, whatever. I was riding hard. I won a couple of races, came in second in a couple of races, low 32s. This year, I went there on the same motorcycle, but I had offset triple clamps, and I had learned something else about wheelbase and sprocket sizes, and I went there with a new setup, a better balanced setup, closer to, the, to a balance between um, not enough trail and too much trail, I found a good, middle ground and I felt so confident and so comfortable but Stefano Mesa showed up pro rider he had just done Moto America the weekend before I watched it on TV they must have said his name 600 times now I got a race Stefano Mesa on a Kramer the guy's less than half my age and the bike is like what does it weigh 100 pounds less than mine whatever so I got my ass kicked four times in a row but I had done low 32s the weekend before, the year before. Guess what I did this time with a more balanced bike? You know, I refer to balance and rake and trail and confidence and lack of confidence like it's this emotional thing, but it's measurable, physically measurable 
differences on your motorcycle that you're picking up on, that you're reacting to, and that you're now able to control better and more accurately. So it's Saturday night, we're at Laguna, and it's the awards ceremony. You, you know, they're, they're giving away first place, this, whatever. whatever. So there's Stefano Mesa. I don't really know him. I know him from TV, but I don't really know the guy. So I walk over and I introduce myself. Hey, I'm Gogo. Good to meet you, Stefano. You know, good, good congratulations with your race wins. And he's very nice back. Oh, you're Gogo. You ride that Super Duke. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, damn, you go fast on that thing. Like, I can't believe it. And I thought, that's really nice of him, you know? He's being super generous. I guess I would do the same if I beat somebody and I was about to beat them again tomorrow. Um, so th that was nice. And I said, well, you know, last year I was doing low 32s, had a couple of problems, electrical and physical stuff. I said, but this year I really wanted to do like 31s, maybe low 31s. Maybe even I would love to do a high 30.999. I don't care. 30 point anything would be great. He looks at me and says, dude, do you not know your lap times? Pulls his phone out of his pocket and says, he's got my lap times page up there, my name and all my lap times. And he says, you're doing 29s. First of all, I almost fell down, but for two reasons. One, the fact that I was doing 29s, I never dreamed I could go that fast, especially at this age, especially on this motorcycle. But then, why is Stefano Mesa looking up my lap times? Like, what's that all about? I don't know which one I was more excited about. But anyway, all that good stuff is the result of me finding a better balance, me getting closer to the mid-range between not enough confidence, too short, and too long, frustrating, won't turn. I found my middle ground. I've been to the mountain top. I got there using my offset triple clamps, which aren't for sale yet, but they will be. Um, but that's not what this point is about. I'm really just talking about balance, whether it's swing arm angle and your drive or, or shock travel, um, compression and rebound and, and what range of travel you're at. Like it's all about balance and compromise, right? You, you could make a bike be amazing on the brakes, right? Or you could make a bike be incredible on the brakes. Um, you brake like this and it, and it wouldn't dive down and be great, but you'd never be able to make a turn, right? You need the bike on its nose to make a turn. So um, you compromise. Um, that's all related to balance. And when you get that balance right, when you get your bike for you balanced, for your weight, for your riding style, for your height, it's the most enjoyable experience. I got my ass kicked four times in a row and I couldn't have been happier. So that's rake and trail, what they feel like, what they behave like, and what it feels like to ride a bike that has the rake and trail that you want, that has the balance that you want, rather than what it wants. Okay, next on the list is drive. Oh, so why, why, am I why would a sport link affect drive? Well, I'll tell you. Um, right now, the way, if this bike was bone stock and I went out and I tried to go real hard, like you try to go real hard on your bike. One of the things that we're up against is the swing arm angle on a bike right off the showroom floor is kind of flat. And if you were racing this bike, you kind of want it to be more of an angle, right? If you were riding hard, doing track days here and there, or if you were a serious street guy, um, and the reason that you want to have more swing arm angle, in my opinion and my experience, is pretty simple to visualize. This point right here is the pivot point of your swing arm. It goes up, it goes down. Here's your axle. And I don't care what shape the swing arm is in between, the only thing we're concerned with, the swing arm angle is concerned with, is this center of this point and the center of that point. Okay? 
So when you have these two points in a perfect world, like an imaginary motorcycle land, if your axle was at this point and your pivot point was at this point and your center of gravity was at this point, when you wake up the throttle, woof, you're gone. Beautiful, perfect world. Unfortunately, that's not reality. Reality is, here's our, here's our point, here's our pivot point, there's our axle, here's our motor. Here's our gas tank full of fuel. Here's our self, the human, on top of all that stuff. So we have this situation. We have um, the axle, the pivot point, and then our center of gravity way up here. So when we accelerate, this wants to go this way, but this wants to go that way. That's a problem, right? So if, if the bike weighs 400 pounds, and um, let's say you weigh 200 pounds, I weigh 200 pounds. Um, so that's 600 pounds. Let's imagine that there's 300 pounds on the front, 300 pounds on the rear. So that's like the load that's on each tire. When you start to accelerate like this, all this weight shifts back and is rotating rearward like this. Depending on how hard you accelerate, there's no load on the front tire anymore. It's all on the rear, 600 pounds on the rear. And what happens with that is um, the rear, all that weight back there compresses the suspension like this and it smushes down. <laughs> what happens then is the forks extend and your trail woo, gets super long. What we talk about when your trail gets super long, the bike's great at going straight. It only wants to go straight. So um, you accelerate halfway through a turn, you got that hard, you know, you, you just start to wind in and the bike starts to squat like this and you go wide. You have to roll back out of it until it comes back in to the turn and you're waiting and your friends blow by you and 20 minutes later you meet at the burger joint and they're like, what happened to you? I'm like, the super duke happened to me. Well, it doesn't have to be that way because swing arm angle, right? So what we can do is to help that, is when you put a sport link, right? Um, you're actually not lowering the axle because the tire is connected to the ground. It, it can't go any farther down. Raising the pivot point of the swing arm. So now when you accelerate, all this force wants to go this way and they're not perfectly aligned anymore. It's not going like this. Now it's like this, right? So we'll exaggerate it a little bit. Imagine the swing arm angle is really intense. When this wants to go this way, it goes underneath. It kind of lifts this point up and goes underneath. You see this lifting motion? So what that does is it helps keep some of the load more forward. It, it, it helps not every pound of force or acceleration being on the rear kind of raises it up like this and helps keep your front more planted which helps you drive so much better drive and stay on the line so much better at staying on the line now 20 minutes dude where are you what happened you're at the burger joint where are your friends so that's a beautiful thing and it's not about who can go faster please i'm not even suggesting that um, I used this bike off the road, on the track, and I was really frustrated when I first... It says right on it, right? Here it is. Ready to race. KTM, ready to race. All over the website, ready to race. This bike was not ready to race when I got it. I pretty much raced it the first weekend on stock. And it was a painful experience. The bike was incorrigible. It didn't want to do anything that I wanted to do. And everything that I was trying to do, I had just finished doing on the Generation 2 1290 Super Duke, which I had set up beautifully. It was like my best friend. This guy comes to town and I was lost. So very slowly worked at things and designed stuff and made some parts. I was, I was excited about the link, that the, the Gen 3 came with a link because I knew there was potential there. I didn't really know how to realize it, literally and actually, but I knew it could be done. Because lots of race bikes have links. 
So, um, it slowly, over a couple of years, developed the sport link. Uh, and now, we've got better swing arm angle, and now we've got better drives. So, that's a beautiful thing about drives. And I'll tell you, when I started this video, I said there was three unfortunate characteristics. The one amazing thing about the Super Duke, the Gen 3 Super Duke, is those three characteristics all really can be fixed with one part. Okay, so that's trail and that's drive, both improved with the same sport link. Now, what about instability? <laughs> you don't have to agree with me, but I'm gonna propose something that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, instability. A lot of people email me, people talk online about Steering dampeners. Which steering dampener do you have? Which one do you find is better? Well, I'm, I need this and I need that. And, and why are we talking so much about steering dampeners? Because of instability. Maybe the bike sometimes is unstable. Okay, when is it unstable? When is the Gen 3 Super Duke unstable? You've, if you've ever experienced head shake or anything like this, when did it happen? When you were just idle throttle? When you were slowing down? Or when you were on the gas? It happens when you're on the gas. That's when instability happens. And we experience it in the front with the head shaking like this. So it's easy to assume that it comes from the front. I believe it comes from the rear, back there. Why? I'll tell you why. We already established that this bike comes with seven miles of trail. So much trail. And if trail equals stability, why are we having instability problems? Doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. That's because it's not coming from the front. Remember what I said about you have a lot of trail in the leading edge, and when your tire is out of whack like this and it touches ground, whack, it's gonna go back, right? When it's over here, whack, it's gonna go back. That's just the nature of having a lot of trail. So here's what I believe happens. When you accelerate and the bike squats down like this, and your front gets light, okay? So here's the pavement, and here's your tire. Maybe your tire's right here. I know you've all felt it. It's kind of a cool feeling, like it's exhilarating. Oh, you can hear the motor's growling and the, and the front is clawing for the air, but just a little bit like this. Well, pavement is not smooth like a pool table, right? It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna undulate. So when you are hovering that front tire just right there, and the pavement comes up and touches it sometimes, if you didn't have those bars exactly in line with the rear tire, if you just cocked them a tiny bit because you're putting energy in, you're accelerating, whatever, now it's like this. <laughs> well, now the tire's here. Whack! It goes straight. But if you're accelerating like this and, and, and you're leaning this way, and maybe when the bars come, when the, when the tire comes up, the bars turn a little bit like this, you can't help it. And then when it lands, whack! It goes like this. So this wacky whack is where instability comes from. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. Sometimes when that tire and the leading edge is pulling that tire and it lands, whack, boom, it'll go farther than perfectly straight. And then you get this hell ride, right? So we put a band-aid on it with the steering dampener, but that's not really the source of the problem. That's just, hey, we got a problem and the head's shaking, so let's put a piston on it. That's not solving the problem. What solves the problem is keeping that weight, keeping the load from transferring all the way to the back, from losing, like from the so much squatting down here, losing the trail, front's lifting, the bike's wheeling a little bit, and you touch down. That's instability, right? That's one source of instability that comes from the rear. There's another one, and it's not swing arm angle this time. This time it's progression. The rate at which our shocks get compressed as the swing arm moves up and down in its travel. As we absorb shocks from bumps and things like this, how much energy gets put into the shock? So, this is the stock link. It's a triangle. 
right? It's a simple triangle with three holes in it. Um, I've been emailed over the years with some people just cutting a piece of aluminum and drilling three holes and coming up with their own length. There's even some people that sell them that just kind of came up with their own numbers. So um, numbers, what is that all about? The distance between these three random holes that are not random at all, they're, they're all very critical and they have a huge role and impact on how your bike feels and behaves. The distance between this hole and this hole does one thing. This hole and this hole does another thing. This hole and this hole does a third different thing, okay? Not only does a sport length change the height, okay? But it also changes the rate of progression, right? So standard, the way uh, SuperDuke comes from the factory, from the showroom, um, it makes sense what they did. They made the spring essentially with their link, with this very certain dimension of the holes that they chose, that they designed into their link. They made it so that the spring responds progressively, meaning in, if your swing arm moves this much, okay, in the beginning of the travel, they made the spring feel soft, nice and compliant. Deep in the travel, they made the spring really hard, okay? And it's wise why they did this. Most manufacturers do this with bikes with links. They send them out the door with a progressive link. This way a 95 pound girl can buy a 1290 Super Duke Gen 3 and ride it out the door and never change a link, never change a spring, just ride it forever and then sell it. And she'll be somewhat happy, right? Because she's riding the bike down here in the soft part of the travel. A 300 pound power lifter can come in a half an hour later and buy the same Gen 3 Super Duke and ride away without ever changing the shock, the spring or anything for the life of the motorcycle and be relatively happy because he's riding the bike with the swing arm up here in the, in the stiffer, harder part. It's the way one spring can kind of serve everybody a little and nobody particularly well at all. So what's wrong with a progressive link when you're really going on the gas? Um, and remember, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Because when you really wick it up, remember the hammer and the balance. You want to know how a spring can relate to this balance of the hammer? Um, because let's say you're going through a turn at 50 miles an hour. Not a big turn, not a big deal. You're just breezing through and you hit a bump. Well, you're not going to be at the compressive range of your spring. Even the big power lift the guy is not going to be that deep. He's just going to be in the middle somewhere, and the bump comes, it's not, not a big deal. He's fine. Just keep going. Let's say you're going 120 miles an hour. Maybe you're at a track day, or maybe you're nuts on some road in the back hills somewhere. When you leaned over, your weight compresses your spring to a certain point, okay? Even when you're straight up and down. Your, your, your weight and the motorcycle compresses the spring to, let's say, here. Remember, where's your bike balanced? Is it on the nose or is it on the tail? So let's say it's somewhere in the middle of the travel. You're leaned over and you're going through this turn. Now, because the G-forces that you're creating by turning, now your suspension is compressed more, farther down closer to that progression, closer to that progressive area where all of a sudden the spring gets much tougher, much stronger. So now you've got your weight, the motorcycle's weight, the G-forces, and then you hit a bump at 120 miles an hour. What's gonna happen? That bump, that down here in the travel at 50 miles an hour, it'd be fine, no big thing. But now if you hit that bump on your way up here, well, hell's gonna break loose, right? It's a much more powerful force that's gonna, the shock's gonna say, I'm not, I'm not absorbing that. My spring right now is appropriate for a freight train because I'm in the progressive zone of travel. So what's gonna absorb it now? 
Because, like I've said in the past, bumps, that force that exists in a bump at a certain speed is not negotiable. It's there. You have to absorb it. Something is going to absorb it. So if your shock says, no go, your tire absorbs it all, right? Because your tire is this big air cushion that doesn't have hydraulics. Like the shock and the fork have hydraulics and they'll, they'll, they'll sense something compressing, right? But they'll slow it down like this and they'll slow. The tire just goes like that. You lose your round shape, you're unstable, and you know, it's upsetting. So the faster you go, the more linear you want your rate to be. You don't want, you don't want it to get stronger as the swing arm compresses. You want it to kind of stay consistent um, throughout the travel, more linear, flatter. So how does this work into that? So like remember I said, um, you could just go in your garage and take a piece of aluminum and cut three holes in it and just change one of the dimensions, just play around. And maybe you have a link that way. Maybe there's even some people that sell links like that. And it doesn't really, haven't really considered all the variables. Um, these sport links do consider all the variables. There's actually software that MotoGP teams use, World Superbike teams use, Moto America, um, where engineers have mapped the whole motorcycle in 3D space. They know where the axle is, they know where the steering stem is, they know the, the pivot point and, and the rear axle and how much the shock moves and where's the seat, and they know everything. They even know the circumference of your tires, and even then, how much those tires compress at the bottom because you know there's somewhat of a flat spot because of air. They know how much air that that tire is recommended to have by the manufacturer. And they work these equations into all the numbers. So I used that software to design the sport link. Okay, before we close this out, I wanna talk about one more thing. Um, sometimes people ask me, well, why don't I just reduce my trail by moving the forks and the triple clamps? That's an excellent question and an excellent point. You can, remember, lower the nose instead of raising the rear. You can lower the nose by sliding the forks up and then tightening the triple clamps, right? I did some research. You have to move your forks five millimeters in the triple clamps to change your trail one millimeter. So they're already sticking out almost five millimeters now, how they come from the factory. Now they're gonna stick out 10 millimeters. You're gonna lose a little bit of ride height, which I don't think five millimeters is gonna make you drag anything on the floor, I don't think. But you only changed one millimeter. You went from 108, which is a lot, to 107, which is a lot. If you move your shock, if you raise the rear, five millimeters by your shock with a sport link, you changed your trail 2.5 millimeters. Five millimeters equals one millimeter. Five millimeters equals 2.5 millimeters. Plus, if you do it with a sport link in the back, you, you address trail, also drive via swing arm angle, also stability by helping reduce progression. So one, does all three, one does just one. I'm not saying it's bad to do, just saying there's a better way to do more things. It's like serendipity, right? It's quite fortunate that three of the major Achilles heels, if, if one thing could have three Achilles heels, this thing has them. And fortunately, all three of them can be solved at the same time by doing the same thing. How about that for a discovery? So I hope this video helps you understand your Gen 3 Super Duke a little bit better, or really any motorcycle for that matter. I mean, these, the science behind these links and, and changing geometry and all this special stuff, it's true for all bikes. It's not exactly the same what you have to do to this bike to make it work or that bike to make it work, but it's all related and it's all fun and it all aims 
at having a better experience, more joy, experiencing more joy on your motorcycle by making it work for you. That's it. Hope this helps.